you can't sound like, you know, a dying cat, which is why I'm not a singer. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today we're going to be talking about different jobs that you can do on a cruise ship. So I know that after this pandemic, there is a lot of you wanting to work on cruise ships, but some of you are unsure of what you actually want to do. On a ship, there are two main departments, the hotel department and the marine department, which I have explained in another video, so I will link that down below. But basically today, I'm gonna to be going through all the jobs within the hotel department. And hopefully this will give you a better idea of what you could possibly do on board a cruise ship. Just wanna say a massive thank you to everyone who is liking, subscribing, watching my videos. I really hope you are enjoying my content and please, if you have any suggestions, any topics that you want me to cover, obviously cruise ship related, um, then let me know in the comments or DM me on Instagram or whatever but it would be great to hear from you and hear what you guys actually want to see. First off, we are gonna start with all the sales jobs. Sales jobs that have targets on board a cruise ship. So first off, you can work in the spa on board a cruise ship. Usually if you work in the spa, you will be working for Steiner, the onboard spa. And in the spa, you could be a therapist, a fitness instructor, a medispa doctor, an acupuncturist, and obviously there's the managers. So although working in the spa, your job is primarily to offer services to passengers on board the cruise ship, I would say a good like 40% of your job is also to sell and sell products to the passengers that of course they need and they want to buy, um, but you will need to sell as part of your job within the spa. You work in the spa you will be working long hours but you have the opportunity to earn really really good money and you will most definitely improve at your craft when i joined steiner i had worked in spas before so i had had experience so i had experience as a beauty therapist but my god did i improve when i worked for steiner because you're doing so many treatments and like anything practice makes perfect the second department that you can work in is the shops department. So you could be a shop assistant, a cosmetician, a jewelry specialist, a watch specialist, and then there's the management. So those are the different roles that you can do within the shops department. It can be long hours depending on the itinerary, but the money is good. And the best perk about working in the shops is you get a lot of time off to get off and explore the ports. I am gonna make a video going more in depth into working in the shops on board a cruise ship. So make sure you hit the notification bell because you won't want to miss it. So then you have the art department. So you can be an art auctioneer or a manager, depending on the ship size, depends on how big the art team is. The art team is usually quite small. You know, I think the, the biggest art team I've ever worked with is four people and that was on quite a big ship. So as an art auctioneer, you will be doing educational seminars. You will be showing people the artwork. You will be hanging in the galleries. So you do need to have a little bit of knowledge on art, but of course, whatever company you choose to work for, they will train you up appropriately. Now with the art auctioneers, they always earn really good money and they do have quite a good amount of time off as well. Like the shops, they work when the ship is at sea and then they get a lot of time off when the ship is at port because obviously if the ship's in port, there's not going to be that many people on board to sell art to. Then you have the bar staff. So of course, primary job is to sell drinks to passengers. Now, I'm sure if you have been on a cruise before, you will know that there's the whole drinks packages thing. As a bartender, your job is to hit target by selling as many drinks and drinks packages as you can. Photography, so I'm sure you know there is the photography department on board, they're taking your photo when you get off the ship, when you get on the ship, on formal nights when you're all dressed up and they're always dotted around the ship. This is a great job if you are interested in photography but you've had very little experience because working on a cruise ship you have the opportunity to try shooting so many things. You know, you obviously take portraits, you take family pictures. If you go out in port, you get to take pictures of these amazing destinations. So being a photographer on board a cruise ship is an amazing way to hone in on your skill. As a photographer, you do get quite a lot of time off to explore the ports as well. Excursion staff. So of course on a cruise ship, you're going to all these new destinations and the cruise line will organize excursions for the passengers. So you can be one of the people that help the cruise line to organize these excursions and book the excursion or help their passenger book the excursion. Now, this is a job that a lot of people want to do on board a cruise ship because you get your own cabin. It's a very good pay packet. You get your own cabin and you get to see some amazing things. 
So normally excursion staff are really, really busy in the mornings on port days because they're obviously getting all the passengers on board the buses and getting them onto their excursions. But then normally they have most afternoons off. So you do get a really good amount of time off if you work in excursions as well. It's not an easy job. There is a lot to deal with, a lot of paperwork. But I think if I wasn't working in the shops, I would be working in the excursions department. You have your next cruise sales. So when people go on board a cruise, they have the option to book their next cruise while they're still on the current one. And pretty much every cruise ship, there will be a loyalty desk where you can book your next cruise and you can get money off if you book another cruise on board. And this is a great job, you get a very nice pay packet. There is a lot to learn. You do need to know your stuff. You know, if someone says, is this cruise ship good for kids? How big is this cruise ship? What cabin is best for me? You need to know this, but of course you will be trained up. On some of the bigger cruise ships, there is a port and shopping guide. The job of the port and shopping guide is to give educational seminars to basically advise passengers on where the best places to shop are in the ports. So Mostly find port and shopping guides on cruise ships that are in the Caribbean or in Alaska. For example, the port and shopping guide will say, you know, if you're looking to buy diamonds, go and buy diamonds from this particular shop in Alaska because they'll give you a great discount and also I'll get loads of commission if you buy it from there. Uh, port and shopping guides earn a lot of money. Port and shopping guides earn a lot of money. However, they don't get a lot of time off you have to be very confident public speaking because you will be doing seminars to 40, 50, 60 people at a time. You need to be prepared to put in the work, you know. It's a nice pay packet because there's a lot of work that goes with it. Casino staff. So on every cruise ship that I've been on and pretty much every cruise ship in the world, there is a casino. If you have worked in casinos before, then you will be able to work in a casino on board. From what I have heard though, you do need experience. You will have had to work in a casino on land to do so on board. However, working in the casino is great because you work in the nights when the ship is at sea and then all day you have off to recover, but obviously you can also get up and get off the ship and explore the ports. Now we're gonna go through the entertainment department. We've got the head of the entertainment department, which is the cruise director. The cruise director is in charge of everything entertainment. He will host shows, he will host television shows if the ship has a cruise channel. He will host events. This job has a very nice pay packet, but you will work a lot. You are in charge of a whole entertainment department, which is crucial for, you know, a floating hotel to have a good entertainment department. So as the cruise director, you are gonna be working a lot. All the cruise directors that I have worked with love their job. You know, if you love it, it's worth putting in the hours. But a cruise director position is something that you have to work up to. It's not something you can just come in at that level. Just underneath the cruise director, you will have an activities manager who, you guessed it, is in charge of all the activities on board. So the activities manager will plan yoga, bingo, if there's a pool party, if there's a dance class, your activities manager will have organized those events. So if you're on a cruise and you get your little uh, paper delivered to you every morning with the breakdown of the daily activities, your activities manager is the person that will have planned out all those events. And sometimes the activities manager will host events as well if they are not busy planning. So you've got your cruise director, your activities manager, then you have your cruise staff and sports staff. So your cruise staff are the people that are going to host these events. So they're gonna host the bingo and the pool party and then your sports staff are gonna be in charge of like the rock climbing wall, the golf course, the wave machine, obviously depending on if your ship has these things. I always really like the idea of being cruise staff. It seems like such a laugh, you know, they have fun with the guests, they're doing all these activities and it is a great job. However, it's really hard work. You have to have an incredible amount of patience um, great social skills, you have to be able to talk to a lamppost. And through my years working on cruise ships, I've really come to learn that being cruise staff and sports staff is not an easy job. They just make it look really easy. It actually takes a lot of skills. And I also thought that cruise staff and sports staff didn't work a lot of hours. That was when I worked for Steiner, so I was working, you know, I was working a lot. But they do, they work a lot of hours because there's constantly activities, even when the ship is in port. Obviously there are sometimes passengers that want to stay on board, so 
there needs to be crew staff and sports staff still running activities for those passengers that want to stay on board. You have the cast, the dancers and singers working for the cruise line who put on those amazing shows for you in the theatre every other night. If you are a dancer or a singer, this is a fantastic way to get experience in the industry. I know after speaking to a lot of dancers, when people graduate, they like to work on cruise ships because it's, you have to be obviously trained for and good at it, but you don't have to have previous work experience. And the same as singing, you know, you have to be trained and you have to be a good singer. You can't sound like, you know, a dying cat, which is why I'm not a singer, but it's a really good way to get experience doing what you love doing. So the cast have a really hectic start of contract and it gets easier as the contract goes on. So before the cast join a ship, they will learn all of the shows. They will then join the ship and they will have to rehearse the shows that they've learned in the space that they have on board the ship. So they will do the shows for the passengers in the evenings, but they will also spend all day rehearsing those shows to get them perfect. And then when they have rehearsed the shows enough and they've all kind of got it down, then the cruise director will be like, okay, you know, we don't need to rehearse every day, we'll just rehearse every other day. So the further in you get to your contract, you know, the less work you have to do. However, you know, if you have a member of your team that breaks something and they have to go home, then it goes back to rehearsing because obviously there's going to be a new person that comes in and you have to integrate him into the cast. All the cast members I have spoke to love their job, it's a really great way to get experience in the industry and a cruise would not be a cruise without a cast. A musician that works for the cruise line, so if you play an instrument, this could be you. If you are a musician, you might be part of the show band um, or you could be a band, so I know cruise lines hire um, musicians and then put them together and to form a band, kind of like Simon Cowell. So you could play in the pubs or on the pool deck when people are sunbathing, just some chilled out tunes. Or as I said, you could be part of the cast, part of the show band. Now these jobs are kind of front of house, but of course there are the backstage staff. You've got your light technicians, your sound engineers, your stage staff, all of the people that are in the background, but nothing would work without them. Maybe you've worked in theaters at home, then you could always come on board a cruise ship and do that as well. Some cruise lines, some cruise ships have a cruise channel content is created on board the cruise and then put on a TV channel for passengers to watch in their cabin if this is the case then you will have a videographer on board and his job or her job will be to video the cruise director giving an interview with the captain or video the pool party and then edit it and put it on the cruise channel for the passengers to watch later so you have the singers, the dancers, the musicians who are employed by the cruise line, but then you also have guest entertainers. These are contractors that are bought on the cruise ship for a brief period of time. Singers, comedians, guest lecturers, dancers, musicians, bands. So like we've had Celine Dion tribute, so she will come on for like three weeks and she'll do her act for three weeks for three cruises and then she'll go home. We've had guitarists that have been bought on for a month. I don't know why, but being a guest entertainer, you do get more money than if you are a musician or an entertainer who works directly for the cruise line. And also if you are a contractor, you will get a passenger cabin rather than a crew cabin. And also you will obviously have to rehearse and do your gigs, but you won't have any extracurricular activities. So like as a crew member, you have to take part in crew drills or you have other duties. Whereas if you are a guest entertainer, you are considered a passenger, so therefore you don't have to take part in any of the drills or any of the other duties. Now we're going into the hotel department. Technically, all of these things come under the hotel umbrella, but we're breaking it up. So this is the hotel bit. Just like the cruise director is in charge of the entertainment side of things, you have a hotel director who is in charge of the hotel nitty gritty side of it, who is the same rank as the cruise director. And just like the cruise director, being a hotel manager is something that you have to work up to. You can't just come in. Even if you've been a hotel general manager in a hotel on land, believe me, a cruise ship is a lot different to a land-based position. So within the hotel department, you obviously have guest services. So reception desk where if you have any complaints, if you have anything wrong with your cabin, if you have any questions regarding the cruise, the cruise ship, 
anything at all. The people working on guest services are going to help the passengers out. You just answer any questions, deal with any complaints, and you basically make the passengers as comfortable as possible and try and ensure that they have the best time on their cruise. To work on guest services, you have to have a lot of patience, a thick skin. I believe you do get paid well for it, but you also do work a lot of hours. Housekeeping, so you've got your cabin stewards who are gonna look after the passengers' cabins. You've got your laundry staff who, you guessed it, are in charge of laundry. And I mean, no hotel would be complete without your housekeeping staff. This is a crucial part of the system. Keeping staff work a lot, they get paid a lot, and the tips are great, I've heard. There will be a finance manager on board. Obviously, cruise ships are a business. People are buying stuff, paying for the cruises going out for dinners. So at the end of a cruise, there is a finance manager who has to make sure everything adds up. You know, if someone had a refund, they need to have got it. If someone upgraded their cabin, it, they need to make sure the payment went through. So the finance manager will obviously have staff underneath them and their job is to make sure that all the numbers add up. Depending on the ship, the size of the ship, how technologically forward they are, you will have IT staff. So Virgin Voyages is very tech forward. So we have quite a lot of IT staff who will be working on the ship. However, my first ship was lovely, but TVs were like the main techie stuff that we had. So there wasn't IT staff on there. So depending on the cruise ship, the cruise line, there will be IT staff on board. There is gonna be a gardener on board. So if you have been on a cruise ship, you will have noticed that there are plants all around the cruise ship. Not every cruise ship, I'm sure, but most cruise ships like to have a few plants and a bit of greenery on board so of course you've got to have someone to look after all the greenery then we have the youth staff so on most cruise ships except if they're adults only you will have a kids club and you will have the youth staff that look after the kids you do have to be qualified and you do have to have experience working with children but otherwise this is a really nice job working in the kids club then we have the food and beverage department i mean cruise ships are known for the good food so of course there's a food and beverage department and within the food and beverage department there are a lot of different roles wine steward sous chef pastry chef maitre d general cook food and beverage manager executive chef dining room manager dining room head waiter cocktail server chef de pate bus boys a butcher buffet server bartender bar manager baker barista mixologist in the food and beverage department there are a lot of different roles and if i'm completely honest with you i don't know much about each individual role so i have just named i think all of them there if you are a chef if you are a wine specialist, if you are a waiter, then I mean, there will be something for you to do on board a cruise ship. You can just get in touch with the cruise line of your choice and ask them what positions they have. Of course, there are the crew. So you will have a crew welfare manager who is in charge of the crew's welfare, planning activities for them, making sure that the environment, the culture on board the cruise ship is a happy one, trying to make it a happy place to work. Of course, you have a HR manager on board a cruise ship. And then I just wanna add, you obviously have the security department and um, the medical department. Now these two departments are part of the marine umbrella because the ship has to have them to be able to sail. But I just wanted to mention them so that if you are a nurse or a doctor or security, you know, and you're thinking of doing that somewhere else, you can do it on a cruise ship. I really hope you have enjoyed this list of jobs that you can do on board a cruise ship. I hope it helps you make a decision on what you would like to do when you work on board a cruise ship. If it has, let me know in the comments what you have decided to do or if you have any questions. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.